Hello, my name is Shivani Chaudhary and I'm the Associate Director of the Housing and Land Rights Network based in New Delhi, India. And we have been monitoring the various human rights violations related to the Commonwealth Games. The Commonwealth Games were held in Delhi from the 3rd to the 14th of October 2010 and resulted in a series of violations and very severe financial and um, social costs for the city of Delhi and the country of India. So in particular, HLRN has been uh, doing a lot of research, writing and publication around the Commonwealth Games and we've been focusing on three major areas of concern. The first has been the process related to the Commonwealth Games and this right from the time India bid for the Games in 2003 has been a very undemocratic process. There has been no public participation, no consultation or public poll with the people of India whether they even wanted the Games to be held in Delhi. And thirdly, there has been a complete lack of accountability, transparency and disclosure of information on the part of the government. So the entire process has been marred in secrecy and has gone against the Indian constitution and existing national law and policies. The second major area of concern is the economic costs. So when India bid for the game and finally what we spent on the games, there was an increase of almost 3,500%. And India is one of the poorest countries in the Commonwealth, but still we hosted one of the most expensive Commonwealth Games ever in the history of the Commonwealth. And it, the cost is somewhere between 6 to 15 billion US dollars. And this is in a country where one in three people lives below the poverty line. And India has some of the worst indicators when it comes to um, child malnourishment, maternal mortality, infant mortality and hunger. In fact, the world's largest number of hungry people reside in India. So it's a huge ethical issue and it's criminal that so much money, almost $15 billion was spent on a 12-day mega event, which really had no benefits to the people of this country. And the third concern we have is the very severe human rights violations that have taken place against the most marginalized populations of this country, in particular, the residents of Delhi, the first has been the violation of the rights of construction workers. Most of these are migrant laborers who were brought into Delhi to work for the Commonwealth Games at construction sites. And they were not paid minimum wages. They were denied adequate living conditions. Most of them had to live in plastic um, tents or in tin shanties in very, very inadequate conditions. Um, they were not paid uh, minimum wages over time, not given health benefits, safety equipment. Even deaths have been reported at construction sites, but no compensation has been paid. And this is despite the High Court of Delhi issuing very strong orders asking for restitution of the workers' rights. Uh, the second group in Delhi that has been uh, extremely marginalized and impoverished by the games are the homeless people and beggars, the people who sleep on the streets of Delhi because they can't even afford a room in a slum. And these people have been routinely arrested and detained, locked up in custodial institutions. And during the Commonwealth Games, for three weeks, these people were literally forced out of the city. They were asked to leave and return after the Games because the government didn't want the foreigners to see poor people on the streets of Delhi. So this is a gross violation of the human rights of the people, their right to live and reside freely anywhere in the country, their right to work and their right to adequate housing. The third group of people um, very badly affected by the games have been um, the people living in informal settlements and slums across Delhi. Almost 250,000 people, uh, HLRN estimates, have lost their homes because of the games. And this is largely due to parking lots, stadiums, and even security concerns. People have had their homes demolished. There has been no notice provided to them. Um, very few people received rehabilitation. Most of them have been rendered homeless. And this is all in violation of national and international human rights law, including a violation of the UN basic principles and guidelines on development-based evictions and displacement. And then we have um, the informal sector workers. These are people who work as street vendors, rag pickers. All of them, almost 250,000, lost their jobs 
during the Commonwealth Games. They were not allowed to carry out their livelihoods. And these are daily wage earners. So because they could not earn their daily wage, they were forced into hunger. And there was a very serious crisis during the games of people not being able to afford food at the end of the day and children having to drop out of school because of this. So these are the groups that were very severely affected by the Commonwealth Games. And the games created a very severe financial and social legacy for the city of Delhi. And it is unknown how long it will take for India to repay the debt of the games. And people have already paid with their lives, their livelihoods, their health, their dignity, and their homes. And so we are calling for the investigations, the ongoing investigations, to look into the human rights violations. And we're calling that the people who are guilty for these crimes against humanity to be prosecuted and justice to be delivered. So we also thought we'd share with you what um, the Habitat International Coalition's um, Housing and Land Rights Network based in Delhi has done. And in May um, of this year, which was about six months before the Commonwealth Games, we published a report looking at the various dimensions of the games. And um, we uh, published it in the form of four fact sheets. So the first fact sheet um, looked at the bid how India actually bid for the games and how unconstitutional that process was. And then we looked at the promises of the games because in every games, the people of the country are promised a lot of benefits and we have questioned and analyzed these. And in the end, it's, our hunch was correct that the Commonwealth Games have not benefited the common people of Delhi. So that is something that you could also examine as to whether what happens actually meets what the government claims to do in its bid for the games. Um, the next fact sheet looked at the economics of the games, whether we can afford this. We also questioned the colossal multiplication of expenditure, how the money kept going up, but how there was no check or there was no denial of funds. As the money kept rising, the government kept meeting the increase in expenditure, and that has greatly affected social sector spending, which is likely to happen in any developing country which has a limited budget. So we feel that social sector funds have been compromised and the last fact sheet which is very important is looking at the social legacy of the games as to who really gains and who loses and unfortunately the people who lose are much more in number the losses they incur are much greater and there are very few beneficiaries of such large events mainly real estate companies some tourism agencies and maybe a few construction companies. So on the whole, the games result in a very severe and human cost. And uh, these are the fact sheets. And this is what they tried to portray. And we also presented recommendations to the government as well as the Commonwealth Games Federation. Um, the report is a very useful tool in publicizing the violations, also raising important questions early on in the process. So we would recommend such reports and we would recommend widespread dissemination of information in the public domain as much as possible. So with that, we'd like to wish you the very best in your work. Boa sorte. I'll now ask my colleague um, Milun Kothari, the executive director of the Housing and Land Rights Network, to suggest some strategies for uh, the Brazilian people to try to monitor and prevent some of the likely human rights violations that might take place when Brazil hosts mega events like the World Cup and the Olympics. Thank you.